Okay, enough shading. Back to the fun stuff. MMD Tools has an awesome one-click method to get an inverted whole outline. Click on the button in this menu to generate an outline, and then turn down the thickness in the Modifiers tab. You can also change the color of the outline for each material to make it a little less harsh. MMD Tools also imports these rigid bodies you can use to get easy physics effects. Show them in the outliner by clicking on the eye. Hit Build Physics, and if you keep him your waifu around and hit Play, the rigid bodies will move your skirt and hair and stuff around. If you don't want to leave your animations up to the physics engine, you can manually pose the hair and skirt using bones in the armature. The script you ran at the beginning hides these bones, so you can go into edit mode to show all the bones, and then find the hair bones you want. In my case, I saw in edit mode that I needed the hair B bones, so I typed hair B into the search bar, and control shift clicked the icon next to the topmost one to make them all visible. If you can't see the screen, make sure to enable it in this little filter thing up here. You can do the same for the skirt bones to make them visible too. One last thing for the armature, joint corrections. If you rotate certain joints, they'll make your waifu's flesh look like wet noodles. Your waifu deserves better than that, so let's fix it to look like this. Start by showing the forearm 01 bone in the outliner. In this example, I'm using the left arm, so it has L at the end of it. Next, show the elbow backbone. Rotate your waifu's arm into a position where the deformation is at its worst. Take the elbow backbone, unlock the location restraints for X and Z, and finally move it out to the hand and in toward the shoulder. Once you get into a spot you like, note down your final X and Z values. I'm just going to round mine to 1.5 for X and 2 for Z. Right click the X position in this location in the Bone tab and add a driver. Open the Drivers window and open the menu on the left. Click X position and on the right menu click the Drivers tab. Set the object to Model Arm and the bone to the bone that is causing the deformation when it rotates. The elbow bone is the one creating this deformation, so copy the elbow.l bone name and paste it into the driver window. Change type to Y rotation and space to local space. Click on your elbow bone and note down the rotation value for Y. Mine is negative 0.724. You want the deformation at its fullest value when the elbow rotates this far. When the elbow is straight, the rotation value is 0. You don't want it to jump up to the value at some point, so a ramp is required in the middle. You don't want it to over-deform by going past the maximum, or reverse-deform by going under the minimum. So you want it to look like this at the ends. Got it? Good. Click on your elbow backbone again and type this formula, where this is the minimum your deformation bone will move. This is the minimum rotation of the elbow bone. These are the max values of your elbow bone, and these are the max values of your deformation bones. Now copy that driver, paste it into the Z position, and change the values. Mine were 2, so I swapped the 1.5 for a 2. Now as your elbow bone rotates, the deformation bone kicks into gear and will slowly move until its final position, and then we'll reach a point where it won't go any farther. For the forearm 01 deformation bone, just unlock the X location restraint, move it toward the hand a little and note down what you got. Paste in the same driver from before and put in the right value. For some reason when I pasted between bones this turned it into a T, so just change that back to model arm. And there you go, easy arm deformations. These are set and forget, so you can hide the deformation bones if you want, and it'll still work. This will also happen at the knee joint. You can get the knee joint deformation bones by showing the knee B bone in the outliner. You can't use the same trick here because the legs are being controlled with IKs. Apparently if a bone is being controlled through an IK process, you can't access its rotation values in local space because they're actually stored in pose space. I wasn't able to find a way to get the rotation values from pose space and automate this while also keeping the IK. The IK is more important than the joint correction, so I'm just going to tell you that you can drag the knee B bone back and then down to make your knee not look stupid. Unfortunately, you're going to have to do this every single time it bends. And just hit Alt G to return it to its original position when your leg is straight or your knee will stick out backward. I also found these two other deformation bones. If your thighs look dumb, take this bone and move it up and then out towards the knee. Another thing you might want to do is forcing the eyebrows or the eyes to always be on top. Go to the Materials tab to select the eyebrows and separate it into its own object by pressing P. Make a new collection and then drag it into the collection. Make a new view layer and keep only the eyebrow collection enabled. Make sure the camera and your other light sources are independent of any collection so that the eyebrows are still lit correctly. Go to the Film tab and make sure transparency is enabled. Turn off the eyebrows in the other view layer. 
Now go into the compositing tab. Hit F12 to catch a render. Get a viewer and pop in the result. Now take the eyebrow view layer and put it on top of the body view layer with a mix node. You can do this by using the eyebrow view layer's alpha as the factor. The same method can be used for getting the eyes on top. That's great, but it renders over everything now. Fix this by checking the backface culling box in material settings and deleting the edge modifier for the eyebrows. The eyebrows are an independent object now, which means the shape keys are independent too. The eyebrow shape keys will work if you change them on the eyebrow object, but they won't if you try to change them on the body object. To link the two, click the eyebrows, then shift click the body, and then run the script. Now the shape keys on the body object will control the shape keys on the eyebrow object. And now the shadows. Turn on contact shadows and up the resolution. Now turn off soft shadows, realize it looks horrible, and don't attempt it again. And this is the final result. Not bad. And that's it. Go make a cool animation, write that visual novel you've always wanted to make, <laughs> make her wait for you at the airport, and then wonder why you did all of this in the first place.